Sir Stephen Timms. Thank you very much, Madam Deputy Speaker. I, I rise to speak uh, very specifically on new clause 34, Government New Clause 34, and the connected government amendments, which, as we've been reminded, give the ministers power to inspect the bank accounts of anyone claiming a social security benefit. And I think it's been confirmed that that includes child benefit, state pension, as well as universal credit and all the others. Extremely wide powers being given to ministers. The minister told us that this measure is expected to save some half a billion pounds over the next five years. Um, I was pleased that a minister from the DWP was present at the start of the debate, although he's not in his place now, so the department isn't hearing the concerns being expressed in this debate uh, about this measure. And the, my right honourable friend on the front bench told us that the, that minister isn't speaking in the debate, so we're not going to be hearing what the DWP thinks about these concerns at all. Um, uh, my right honourable friend also told us, and I hadn't seen this assurance, that these powers are not going to be used for a few years. And so I'm completely, if that's correct, I'm, I'm not I'm completely mystified why this is being done in this way. If actually we had a few years to get these powers in place, why didn't the government wait until there was an appropriate legislation which could be properly scrutinised, rather than bringing them forward now with zero scrutiny and no opportunity for common scrutiny? Uh, there will, no doubt, be scrutiny um, in the other place, but surely a measure of this kind ought to have scrutiny in, in this House. Um, I, I chair the Work and Pensions Select Committee. We've uh, received um, substantial concerns about this measure, but for example, expressed by Citizens Advice, um, the Child Poverty Action Group put this to us, and I think this sums up what a lot of people feel, I, I quote, it shouldn't be that people have fewer rights, including to privacy, than everyone else in the UK, simply because they are on benefits. And that does appear to be the position that the government now it, it is taking. Um, if the, uh, I, I think it is quite surprising that the party opposite is bringing forward such a major expansion of state powers to pry into the affairs of private citizens, and particularly doing it in this way that we're not able to, to scrutinise what they're uh, planning. Um, as we've been reminded, the state has long had powers where there were grounds for suspecting that benefit fraud had uh, been committed. The proposal here is for surveillance where there is absolutely no suspicion at all. And that's a very substantial expansion of the state's powers to intrude. Annabelle Denham, Deputy Comment Editor at the Daily Telegraph, uh, warned in The Spectator of this measure handing, and I quote, authorities the power to snoop on people's bank accounts. Now, I suspect that the views expressed there are generally more likely to find uh, support on the benches opposite than here. Uh, uh, and, and so I'm, I'm increasingly puzzled why the government thinks this is an appropriate way in which to act. And I wonder whether the fact that there have been warnings like that one that prompted ministers into rushing this through in this deeply, deeply unsatisfactory way without an opportunity for proper scrutiny because they, they, they thought that if there had been parliamentary scrutiny, then there would be substantial opposition on their side of the House as well as on this side. It's very difficult to understand 
why it's being done in this way um, otherwise. So as we've been reminded, um, this measure will give the government the right to inspect the bank account of anyone who claims uh, a state pension. So all of us actually, every single one of us, this measure will give the government the right to look into our bank account at some point during our lives without suspecting that we've ever done anything wrong, without telling us that they're doing it. Uh, the minister said earlier on, uh, and, and, and this is what I've always understood to be the principles of the party that he is uh, a member of, that the powers of the state should be limited to those absolutely necessary. And yet the power here to look into the bank account of everybody claiming a state pension, he wasn't able to give us any reason why on earth the government should think they, they, would, they should do such a thing, or what, why they would ever need to look into the bank accounts of people claiming, everybody claiming a state pension. What, what on earth would the government need to do that for? The entitlement to the state pension is not based on income or savings or anything like that. So why would the government ever wish to do that? And if we can't even think of a reason why the government want to do it, why is the government now taking the power to enable them to do it? If the principle is, and I think all of us would agree with this actually, whatever party we're in, the powers of the state should be limited to those absolutely necessary. Well, that power is definitely not absolutely necessary, and indeed no one has been able to come up with any reason for why it would ever be used. So, yes, I will give way. I'm grateful to my right hon. friend for giving way, and indeed, actually, there is something called a production order. So if somebody was on an investigation for benefit fraud, uh, an, uh, an application could be made before a court for the production of bank accounts. So if it was a matter of suspected fraud, there's already a mechanism available. Yeah, there is a clear and long-established right in law for the legal degree to look into people's bank accounts if there is a suspicion of fraud. What this power is giving the department is the ability to look into the bank accounts of people where there is no suspicion at all. And as I say, it, it will be all of us, all of us at some point in our lives claim a social security benefit and we're giving the government the power to look into our bank accounts with this measure. The, the Minister rightly mentioned that the idea first appeared in a, a DWP paper in May last year. That spoke of the need to balance this power against people's right to privacy, to ensure the new power was uh, uh, appropriate, that it was no more than necessary, and has the right checks in place. Now, those proposals, having been mooted in May of last year, should then have been published. We should have been able to see what exactly the proposals were. They should then have been an opportunity for discussion. They should have been consulted on. And there was plenty of time between last May and now in order to do all of that. Instead, the first we saw of this was last week, uh, and there's been no consultation at all since that initial mooting of the idea in May of last year. If the Minister could give us any explanation for why that dreadful uh, pattern, course of behaviour and procedure has been followed, we'd all be interested, but I, I, it seems to me incapable of being uh, defended. The amendment gives the government extremely broad powers with no checks in place, and it's been done in a way that minimises parliamentary scrutiny of what is proposed. And I, I, I find it very hard to see how it can possibly be defended. I, no doubt the Minister will tell us that at some point there will be some documents setting out power, you know, checks and balances and, and so on, but th those need to be part of this scrutiny, not 
the government takes it all away and they'll come back in a few months' time and tell us how they're going to constrain the use of this power. Uh, a final point, Mr Deputy Speaker, if I may. Uh, it, it occurs to me, looking at this, that it is possible that the power that is introduced here could be used to establish benefit eligibility for people who do not currently claim benefits. For example, we know there is a very large number of people who do not claim pension credit but are eligible for pension credit. Quite a lot of the information about whether or not they're entitled to pension credit is already held in the public sector, in local councils in particular. Um, and if it was possible to check whether people uh, had, had, had the, 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 the less than the threshold uh, savings level, then that could help in establishing automatically eligibility for pension credit. And I wonder if the Minister could tell us whether that is intended with this proposal or, or not.